Hey everybody, welcome back to the ski resort. I'm sorry this episode took a while to make, I had a number of technical difficulties and hiccups along the way. But here we are, and there are two videos on screen right now, and you're probably wondering why that is. Oh, um, first of all, I recorded this entire episode and I forgot to save the park afterwards. Uh, which is something that I'm very good at doing and it's really getting on my nerves that I keep doing this. But in this case, I still had all of my footage, I just lost all of the progress that I made. So I decided to use this as an opportunity to do a fun little experiment and re-record the entire thing, try to rebuild what I originally built with a few small changes here and there and see to what extent when you do something a second time, uh, you do it better and faster than you did the first time. So you can see my original and first recording that I uh, lost the progress of in the top right screen and then the rest of the screen is filled up by the new recording uh, which is the progress that I actually kept and the question is will I be faster and will I improve in some things on my second attempt and I can probably spoil already that I did end up doing things a lot faster uh, I did decide not to do more, so at some point during the video we'll switch back to the old recording and that's when you'll notice uh, just how much faster I was able to do stuff the second time around. Anyway, on to what I'm actually doing in this video. Uh, the bulk of this episode is made up of me making an artificial lake, as you can see here. I'm already uh, quite a bit further ahead in my second recording than in my first one. Um, but you're probably wondering what the reason is for the artificial lake, at least uh, if you're not too familiar with ski resorts. So, in the first and second episode I installed snow lances everywhere, which are these metal poles with the orange bags at the bottom, uh, which create artificial snow. Now, the thing is, the way that these things work is uh, very complicated and I can't really explain it exactly uh, but they need compressed air and a water supply and they shoot it into the air in such a way that uh, by the time these particles fall down they'll have accumulated into snow particles and again I don't know exactly how this process works uh, there's a lot of interesting physics involved there uh, that I'm not quite equipped to explain but it's how these things work regardless and it means that if you have snow lenses in a ski resort you need to have some kind of water supply and typically uh, ski resorts will create artificial lakes to store water uh, to use to make artificial snow with it. So uh, somebody pointed this out in the comments on my uh, last video I think uh, and um, I thought it was a good piece of feedback uh, to add a lake which I completely forgot about uh, earlier. So uh, thanks for that comment by the way and thanks for the comments in general, they've been really nice and uh, I've got a lot of good feedback and lots of great tips and I'll definitely come back to some of that feedback later in this episode and in future episodes as well. Anyway, as you can see by now I've made quite a bit more progress on my second attempt than my first one and the lake is already finished on that one and I still need to finish uh, some of the things around the lake on my first attempt. I also changed a few things. Uh, I put that fence around the lake border itself on the new attempt because on the old one it's way, it was way too far away from the lake. I was figuring that there would be a path between the fence and the lake but in hindsight uh, that's kind of a, a, a slipping hazard so I didn't want people to slip into the lake and slipping down the side of the hillside wouldn't really be as dangerous so I put the uh, fence around the lake as it probably should have been all along. I also changed the look of the lake overall. As you can see on the new attempt I have very clean cut concrete borders, uh, whereas on the old one the snow was kind of overhanging into the lake, uh, which looked like uh, a thicker pack of snow than I think there should really be in the park, and overall it just didn't look quite as clean as the new attempt, so I think that's a slight improvement as well. I, I also put lights around. Uh, the old lake, but in hindsight this lake is really just here for functional reasons. There's no reason for uh, a fancy walkway. Maybe in the summer you'll often find that these lakes are being used for some kind of recreational activities in the summer, uh, which is pretty cool. I might add that at some later stage, but for now it's really just functional and that's what I'm focusing on. I'm also bu uh, building this small wooden shed for no actual reason <laughs> other than it just looked nice and I wanted to try adding something to at least have an extra building in here and not just have everything be trees. Uh, but obviously I'm gonna have to add some more buildings in the future as well. I got some recommendations for uh, an opera ski bar, which I think is very important, one of those round pavilions 
they're too iconic not to include. Uh, or some kind of restaurants, or in general some buildings at the bottom of the valley uh, to make a, a little small village to some extent. Anyway, I actually wanted to also talk in this episode a bit more about artificial snowmaking and how it works as I'm still working on this lake here because I think it's a really interesting topic. Um, especially because it's become more and more important in the last few decades. Really the reason why I decided to add artificial snow into this uh, ski resort is because, at least here in northwestern Europe, a ski resort just doesn't look realistic without these. Especially on a low elevation, which judging by the, the size and shape of these mountains, this resort would definitely be. It's become increasingly necessary in the last couple of decades due to climate change. Um, I swear I don't want to get too political in my Planet Coaster videos, uh, but at this point, Especially in ski resorts, it's become increasingly clear that climate change has been happening and while it's been affecting different regions in different ways, it seems like the Alps and surrounding areas in Europe are losing a lot of snow days per year. Uh, glaciers are, are retreating quite a bit and many ski resorts are actually losing their certainty that there will be snow in the snow season. Hence, more and more ski resorts have been investing in artificial snow in the last couple decades and you see especially these snow lances popping up everywhere. Although there are also other methods of making snow, like snow cannons or snow fans, depending on what you want to call them, uh, but those aren't available in the workshop and I tried building them, but there are really barely any good pieces for that available on Planet Coaster. Uh, and besides, I think snow lances are realistic to add into this resort anyway, because it looks like everything would be recently renovated in this uh, resort. The lifts and stuff are new, for instance, and nowadays you'll often find uh, snow lances being built. Uh, because as far as I'm aware, they are cheaper than uh, traditional uh, snow fans, even though the snow is of different quality uh, and perhaps not quite as good. Which is definitely a thing, by the way. Uh, and I think any people who have skied before and who have skied on artificial snow before can attest to the fact that artificial snow really feels different from fresh powder snow. I don't think it's quite as good, I don't think it's really terrible either, um, but it's definitely kind of a last resort. That said, uh, it's a very important last resort. I've definitely also been in situations, here in the Alps at least, that um, the entire mountains are just completely green and there's no snowfall at all and really you're just skiing on a small strip of artificial snow in the middle of a green meadow which is uh kind of sucks but at least it makes me that artificial snow is here uh, i think it's quite an important infrastructure in ski resorts nowadays because despite being extremely expensive because the infrastructure is uh is quite extensive. You need um, you need the artificial lakes, you need to install all the snow lenses, but then you also need to install all the pipelines that connect uh, this entire system together. It's really some of the most expensive and also, uh, well, it takes a lot of electricity uh, to run this whole kinds of system. So uh, the fact that the ski resorts are investing in this so much uh, really shows how important this is to keep ski resorts running. Even if it's not to provide all of their snow, which is usually hopefully not the case. Uh, it at least provides certainty that if you're booking a ski trip in advance, and this might be a couple uh, of months in advance and it's very expensive, you at least want to have certainty that you'll be able to ski. Uh, be it on natural snow, which of course would be nicer, but uh, it might as well be on artificial snow if there's nothing else available. So yeah, altogether, it's quite important. Uh, for this episode, I actually decided to read a bunch of articles. Uh, I guess I'll link that down in the description. It's not really a citation or anything, uh, but just if you're interested in the topic. Uh, there's a bunch of interesting information about it. Uh, there are even some people who are arguing that uh, despite the fact that artificial snow takes a lot of electricity, uh, it also might curb some albedo effects and in that sense uh, curb effects of emissions, but I'm not entirely sure to what extent that is really true. Um, but it's definitely very much true that climate change is posing a threat to the skiing industry here in northwestern Europe or, and in central Europe and uh, that as such the industry has been reacting to that in a lot of different ways. 
What's also interesting is that artificial snow does seem to have a kind of effect on the surfaces of the mountains and affecting the soil and vegetation in these areas uh, in a negative way. But regardless of that, I think for these resorts at least, it's become too important at the moment uh, to let it slip. What's also interesting is that ski resorts are focusing more and more on the summer activities. At least for Winterberg, I know for instance uh, that recent years they've been much more busy in the summer and some summer months have even been busier than the key winter months uh, because they're focusing more on mountain biking and things like that and using the ski lifts which are going to be increasingly difficult to use for skiing uh, for other activities as well. There was also some irony in me recording this episode right now because, as you might know, I started this series when Belgium had an extreme heat wave a couple of weeks ago. Uh, that was in June. That June turned out to be the hottest June in Belgium of all time. And last week, when I was trying to record this video, uh, we hit the hottest two days in Belgium's recorded history, finally hitting over 40 degrees Celsius for the first time. Uh, I even had to stop recording because my CPU was overheating, which was not that great. But uh, yeah, I guess that's the one thematic link in this episode. Anyway, at this point, you can see that the uh, old recording has come back to the front stage and the new one is basically finished. And I want to take this time to explain some of the things that I've been doing because uh, these things have been basically identical from the uh, old recording to the new one. Um, and it's mostly related to feedback that I got on the first two videos. So over here I'm adding some uh, fences, or really some nets, to protect skiers from <laughs> their own dumb impulses, I suppose. Uh, no, to prevent skiers from skiing into ski lifts, uh, which you'll very often see. Um, and I'm also placing some of these nets uh, on the sides of very steep valleys as I just did on that little path going through the forest or from areas where you can't go back to any pistes anymore. I'm also adding quite a bunch of foliage, especially underneath the ski lifts. I had a bunch of comments uh, about how barren the land was underneath the ski lifts, which I agree, it definitely shouldn't be. Um, so under the assumption that the ski lifts would have been installed a few years ago, and now you can see nature blossoming underneath them once again. Um, I'm adding some very small spruces underneath the lifts and also some tree stumps from trees that would have been cut to cut this line through the forest. And some smaller uh, slight adjustments as well. I'm adding some terrain paint everywhere uh, to make the land underneath the trees unsnowy and kind of dirty. Uh, not in a sense of being filthy but you know showing the soil and dirt underneath the trees where the snow doesn't really uh, fall down and adding some ground shrubbery as well because ground shrubbery is pretty important and I'm not going to add too much of this because <laughs> there's a lot of foliage in this map uh, but especially around the sides of the piste and underneath the ski lifts I think you'd find a lot of this. I also tried to some extent to use it to demarcate where the piste would start because in real life uh, you can usually very easily tell uh, what's groomed and what isn't groomed and in that sense tell what's pieced and what isn't uh, but in Planet Coaster that's a bit more difficult because well it's not a skiing simulator so we don't have ground textures for groomed or ungroomed snow uh, so I'm using some of the rougher snow to paint the areas that aren't pieced and using the completely flat clear snow to demarcate what is the pieced area and I think that works alright it's not perfect uh, but at least you can kind of tell the difference between snow that's accumulating alongside the forest and snow that you're supposed to ski on. And I guess related to this, I had some suggestions to add some moguls to one of the black pieces, which I think is an amazing idea and I would love to do something like that. I tried and messed with uh, terraforming to do it uh, and with some of the snow pieces that we have in game, but neither of them looked really good. I felt like the moguls looked kind of unrealistic and unbelievable. So I decided against the idea, but maybe one day uh, I do find a way to make them realistically. Uh, but for now, I don't know. I thought it was a bit too strange looking to really go through with that idea. Uh, but I love it, and maybe one day I do end up doing something like that. Uh, there was also an idea to do a fun park, but that's a topic that I'm going to save for the next episode. 
But I do want to say I'm not going to be very good at it uh, because I've never really skied on any terrain parks. Or at least I've been on them, but I'm a, I'm a total wuss and I'm a total noob. Uh, so really, I've only been on boxes and I've never actually done jumps or anything like that. But uh, I'll try my best later to do something like that. Anyway, we're getting near the end of the episode here. I'm just finalizing this uh, fence alongside this uh, this road going up the mountain, which is, uh, I have to say, getting a bit annoying because as awesome as these skiing pieces are, uh, these skiing uh, items are, uh, they do also have the rotation issue that you see with a lot of TMTK items where you really need to use the uh, 3D gizmo to place each of them. So that, that was a bit annoying. But, you know, that aside, not doing too bad there. And that's the end of this episode. So I'd like to thank you guys for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.